Good morning, my name is Mike Quentin, pastor of Mesquite Baptist Church in Mesquite, Nevada. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you probably found us on YouTube for this presentation. We also have a Facebook page and a website, mesquitebaptistchurch.com, as well as a physical address, 742 West Pioneer Boulevard, Suite A Like Adam in Mesquite, Nevada. You can join us any Sunday morning at 1030, any Wednesday afternoon at 130 for worship services. Thank you for joining us. And while you're getting your Bibles and turning over to Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 21, Luke chapter 4, 16 through 21, I found a definition of plagiarism. Plagiarism is getting in trouble for something you did not do. So um, many people have been uh, accused of that these days. And if you've got your Bible, today we're going to look at um, our continuing series. Every year our church has a theme, and this year it's Great Things based upon a song. And in that song, I found 12 themes, and the last Sunday of every month, the message is, revolves around that theme. The verse this month is, you free every captive, you break every chain from Luke chapter 4. So with that said, let me read to you from the scripture, Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 21. And Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for sending your son to die for our sins. Lord, I hope that by the end of this program, Believers will be encouraged to uh, understand better what has taken place in their lives with salvation. And for those who don't know you as Savior, that they will see their need for Jesus in your precious name. Amen. Back on June 27th, 1976, an Air France Airbus airliner with 248 passengers on board, passengers and crew, was hijacked by terrorists. It was taken to Entebbe Airport in Uganda, where Idi Amin was the dictator. There was the folks, the people on the plane were separated into two groups. Ultimately, 106 Jews were held for $5 million ransom, or they would be executed on July 1st. What happened instead, though, was six C-130 aircraft with 100 Israeli commandos, landed, stormed the building to kill the terrorists and to free the captives. You might say they took captivity captive. Imagine being one of those captives in a dark, windowless room, being held by those who hate you, and suddenly the door is kicked open by a man who says, you're free. You are free. You can come out of the darkness into the light. You'll soon be taken to a place of complete safety. Verses 18 through 21 of Luke that I just read you is exactly what was said that day in the synagogue in Nazareth. Said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Isaiah said, and that's quoting from Isaiah, Isaiah said Messiah would do all those wonderful things. Who are those captives? Who is this written to? Verse 19, the poor in spirit, the brokenhearted, the blind. Could Jesus be talking to me? Yes, 
before I trusted him as Savior. I was poor in spirit. I was blinded to the things of God, and he set me free. Luke 19.10 says that Jesus came into the world to seek and save that which was lost. And for 29 years, I was lost. As a child, I marveled at the stories in vacation Bible school that I attended, but I was never told by anyone that I remember that I was lost and needed a savior. As a young adult, preoccupied with life and a career, I had all the answers. Then God in his mercy revealed to me my true condition. Lost, a sinner in need of a savior, could not save myself. The moment Adam and Eve sinned, they were captured by Satan. 2 Timothy 2.26 says, The snare of the devil taken captive by him at his will. That Satan has taken all unbelievers captive in this world. And Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Therefore, everyone is a captive of sin and of Satan. But God... God has a plan to recapture the captives and set us free. Little by little, God revealed himself to the captives. They were captive in sin right from the Garden of Eden. And little by little, God revealed himself through time. First to the patriarchs, to Job, to Noah, to Abraham, then to the nation of Israel. God provided through Moses the law that was a mirror for the nation of Israel to see his righteousness and uh, our need of a savior, our unrighteousness. God sent the prophets to tell of a day when God would make right all the wrongs in this world. Captives would be freed. Some, not all. John 3.19 said that most people sadly Love the darkness, hate the light and love the darkness, hate good and love bad, evil. They love sin, they love being owned by Satan, captives by Satan. Well, the day is coming when Messiah Jesus will return and announce the day of the Lord. Like in Tebby, it'll be without warning. The door will be kicked open and the captives will rush out of darkness into the light, the safety, and the freedom. Freedom has been bought at an awful price. Jesus paid that price on the cross at Calvary to purchase your freedom and my freedom from captivity and sin. Back to our text. Jesus is reading those words from the book of Isaiah to the people of his hometown in the synagogue of his childhood in Nazareth. Beautiful promises. How many times had the people heard these words? At least once a year, they would open up that scripture and read it publicly. But in verse 19, Jesus stopped mid-sentence. He didn't finish the verse. Why not? All the other priests and rabbis read it in its entirety, read Isaiah 61, 2 in its entirety, and the day of the vengeance of our God. Jesus did not pause. He stopped, rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the rabbi, and sat down to teach. Was he dishonoring Isaiah? Remember, one time the Pharisees accused him of dishonoring the Sabbath. That was Matthew 12, 8 and Luke 6, 8. And over in Mark 2, 28, it says, it best. He said, I am the Lord, even of the Sabbath. As author of this book, the Bible, he has every right to use it as needed. But he told them that he would not change one jot or tittle, one dot, one line. Verse 20, every eye was upon him after he read and sat down. Every eye it was perfect tension, perfect timing. And in verse 21, the greatest news, Messiah had come to rescue 
the captives. The enemy was neutralized. Follow me to safety, he sang. Creation had been waiting 4,000 years to hear those words. But why did he stop mid-verse? Because the day of the Lord has a beginning and an end. That day, Jesus announced the door had been opened. That door is still open after 2,000 years for those who will trust him as Savior and be freed from their captivity. But a day is coming when Jesus will return. It's documented in Revelation 19, chapter 19, verses 11 through 16, and that he will come back and overthrow the unrighteous, wicked governments of this world and establish a kingdom of righteousness. And that will finish the verse that he started at, in Luke chapter 4. Proverbs 34 said, Who has ascended up into heaven? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established the ends of the earth? What's his name and what is his son's name? Talking about God the Father and God the Son, Jesus. Psalm 68, 18. You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. Ephesians 4, 8. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. Jesus came to lead captivity captive. He came to recapture those taken captive by sin and by Satan. He opened the eyes of the spiritually blind. He makes the spiritually poor rich in the knowledge and wisdom of God. He defeats Satan, the captor. Are you tired of being held hostage by Satan? Are you tired of being captive and living in captivity of sin? Great things. Jesus came to free every captain and break every chain. Father, thank you so much for this message today. I know it was short, but Lord, I, I pray that it, uh, it moved people to understand that they don't have to live in captivity, that their freedom has been purchased with the ultimate price of Jesus' death on the cross that is now offered, eternal life is offered, is a gift. Father, I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Also, for those who don't know Christ as Savior, I hope you understand today, after hearing this, of what Jesus did for us, that he led, us, uh, he led the captives of sin to freedom through his death on the cross. And it's not an automatic thing where everyone gets saved and everyone goes to heaven. It's now offered as a gift. It's been that way since the beginning, since the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve had a choice. Cain and Abel had a choice. Cain, the very first child ever born, turned out to be a murderer. He murdered his brother, Abel. It's a choice, folks. And today, God gives you and I a choice to trust him as Savior by looking at our sinful uh, condition in captivity of sin. And Jesus has paid that debt and broken that chain and offers it as a eternal gift to you and I that if we will trust him as Savior, not any of our works of what we call righteousness and good things, but trusting him and him alone, he will save you and you will spend eternity in him, in heaven with him forever and ever. With that said, until next time, may God be with you.